Sometimes I just don't understand what's going on with the world. I just don't understand how a game that does so much right can still be wrong. It's stuff like this that just keeps me up at night. <coughs> <coughs> Our story begins back in 2005 when a group of former Blizzard Entertainment employees, fresh from working on World of Warcraft and the Burning Crusade, went out to form their own studio, and this would become what is known today as Carbine Studios. They set out with the goal to harken back to a golden age of MMORPGs, where men were men, women wore scantily clad armor that offered no real sensible protection, and children couldn't play because it was rated T for Teen. But they did anyways because Mommy can't look away from Candy Crush and Dr. Oz for long enough to stop you. You're dropping the ball there, parents of America! This goal became Wildstar, a science fiction MMORPG that strove to blend a mysterious plot, an outrageous setting, action-based combat, classical and difficult PvE and PvP to create the next great MMORPG. And basically, according to everyone, they failed miserably. That's right, despite putting together a game that was fairly well received by critics and praised for its originality and evolution of the genre, if you really ask anybody about Wildstar these days, you usually get a lot of stuff like, Isn't that game dead? Didn't it go free to play? And it breaks my goddamn heart every time I hear it. Now based on their quarterly earnings reports, I'm willing to bet that most of the people watching this video have never actually played Wildstar. Even those of you who are claiming you'd absolutely definitely pay for it if it went free to play. So let's take a look at Wildstar is before I get into what happened to it. Wildstar is a summation of a decade worth of MMORPG experience. To say it doesn't really feel like a revolution in the genre, more so an evolution in the genre. The ideas have been polished to a mirror shine and improved upon to such an extent that it just feels fresh while still feeling familiar. It's a really great feeling to have in an MMORPG, especially coming from me, somebody who's played MMORPGs since fucking ever. Dark Age of Camelot, bro, get on my level. At least that's the opinion I got from it, and you're here to get my opinion. If you want someone else to play, get the fuck off my channel. You know, do what I did, what I, get out of here! What are you even doing here? But none of that would matter if it weren't for the great enemies you have to fight with their own unique attacks, from badass bosses all the way to crappy trash mobs. Enemies are fun to engage, combat's thrilling and rewarding, bosses even perform amazing combat scenarios. They're fantastically well designed. G play the game, play the game. Get up, fucking play the fuck. Go, tender, go, go now, pause the video. That's how YouTube works. All of these features are polished to a mirror shine by people with a real passion for Wildstar and its development. So if this stuff is all so well done and well received by critics, why is Wildstar considered to be a failure by so many out there, and the free-to-play chant so very loud? Well, to answer that question, at least in my opinion, it has three parts. I'll note that I'm more of a PvE nerd, so my focus will be from that perspective. There may be some other problems I don't cover here, but, you know, probably in disclosure. Wildstar's Endgame. When all these people reached level 50, they quickly ran face-first into a brick wall. Endgame was not finished, and clearly not really tested that much. I'm not sure if this was Carbine's missed sight, or f fucking fuck up themselves, or NC stuff pushing the game out the door, but it leads to the biggest issue that Wildstar had, and that it was far too early for the game to come out. That it hadn't been testing, it wasn't done. The first problem with dungeon medals were entirely messed up. This fucked up all of Endgame gearing. So, dungeons, of course, you can earn three metals, bronze, silver, gold. But at the end game, at least in the beginning, the only real rewards worth having came from gold medals. So you wound up being a new player, frustrated when your party fell apart because as soon as it became apparent that you were getting a silver medal, everybody would fucking leave. Then you'd be the seasoned veteran who really can't get anything out of anything that isn't a gold medal anyways, so you have total justification to leave. Secondly, you have the attunements, which were long difficult, drawn out, and required silver or better medals from dungeons, which exacerbated the issue with dungeons, stopping a lot of players from getting the top level content. PvP was also utterly broken, with high level sets being doled out like candy once players reached a certain rating, turning them into unstoppable badasses when playing with players of not that level. Then there's a lot of other issues that came up, like veteran ship hands not being implemented yet, so as players rolled into max level, they were greeted with frustration, constant defeat no matter what they did, broken groups, bugs, and worst of all, daily quests. Ugh. 
This second one is a little bit of a weird one. When you look at it, servers are not usually considered a reason a game dies. But in this case, they're a maze or reason why the game is perceived as dead. The hype for Wildstar was real. It was huge, engrossing. The launch was massive. So massive, in fact, that Carbide had to online new servers in order to deal with the massive influx of people. But as people hit endgame, they realized that it was boring and frustrating and irritating and they couldn't get anywhere, so they left. So you've got all of these extra servers. With all of these people leaving, eventually a lot of those servers started looking like graveyards, which caused a bit of a feedback loop. As more people left, more people saw it get bad and left as well emptying them further and further until rumors of dead cities were spreading everywhere. By the time Wildstar's servers were converted into a single massive mega server, it was too late. Rumors had spread that Wildstar was empty, and they were right. A lot of those servers were empty. Capital cities were dead and barren. With the initial hype dying down mixed with the endgame wall, players were leaving left, right, and center. Even now, the PvP servers widely considered dead to this day. Carbide made a lot of promises, things like monthly updates, major patches coming a lot quicker, transparency, and addressing a lot of the problems that are coming up with the game. But when it came to actually following through on a lot of that, they were silent. They were very quiet about the botting problems that came up very early in the game's life cycle, as well as major issues regarding the eventual mer merger of the servers and all sorts of customer complaints. It, we really didn't get anything, but we're working on it! This silence caused a lack of faith in the community. Those who had expected so much from Carbine were kind of left a little bit disappointed by it. Of course, with all the other problems cropping up, this exacerbated the migration out. No more is this more apparent than the Wild Star subreddit, which for a long time was suffering from major complaint problems. At one point, it was a little bit... nothing more than a fucking complaint board for Wild Star. There was nothing but toxic bullshit about how Wild Star was dying and there's no way it's gonna make it. The subreddit lost over half of its subscribers in that time. And it, a lot, for a lot of people, that toxic hellhole was the first experience they had with the Wildstar community. And it wasn't good. All of these issues compounded on each other. So much so that by the time they were all resolved, all the goodwill and hype and acclaim that Wildstar built up during its development was all gone. But it's a year on now. How's Wildstar looking? Well, after five patches and huge reworking of game systems, the game's gone a long way to remedy its mistakes. At this point, after the inclusion of a lot of casual, friendly content, such as ship hands, the reduction of 40-man raids to 20-mans, changes to endgame gearing, the merger of the servers, most of the problems that Wildstar had when it launched are gone. In fact, all of them are. I can't think of a single issue that had come up during that period that still plagues the game. And I've been playing it now for a solid month and a half since I returned. The game's better now than it's ever been, and in my humble opinion, the best MMORPG available on the market. Its influx of content, constant updates, they're entirely worth the $15 a month sub fee. And every day I hear about new people coming back or trying it for the first time. But the sad story of Wildstar doesn't have an ending yet. There's a pervasive attitude online from players who want the game to convert to free-to-play or buy-to-play models that, in the end, would turn it into something akin to the Old Republic, a shameless microtransaction hub that would carve away the soul of the game. The PvP server on the North American side and European sides are still empty, and earnings reports, despite more and more people returning to Nexus every day, are grim. Wildstar is an example of a game suffering the pains of a difficult launch, one of the most disastrous MMO launches in history. But despite this, Wildstar has a future, and a, it's a great game, worthy of your time. If you've been burned out by World of Warcraft, and you're looking for a home, if you still talk fondly about Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King, well, Nexus is waiting for you. Unlike a lot of the stories in this industry, the sad story of Wildstar can still have a happy ending. All we need to do is give it a chance. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my little video on the sad story that was Wildstar. It really is a great game, and I encourage you to check it out. They've got a 10-day free trial up right now. You should go do that. I, I will also mention this wasn't at all a sponsored thing, so don't worry. This is my own personal opinion. You know you can trust me. Thanks for watching, though. I really appreciate you checking out my video. And uh, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe, you know, as usual. Thanks for helping out, and you have a great one.